Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we see the secret of the apostles. And I'd like you to understand that these guys, these guys were following the script that Jesus dictated to them. Acts chapter 1 is a capacity building exercise that Jesus put in place to equip his apostles who will be saddled with the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God to equip them so that they will have what it takes to cause the gospel of the kingdom to reach the ends of the earth. So I, I don't have time to take you to Acts chapter 1 and show you the things Jesus did to them to make them competent ministers of the new covenant. Whenever we have the liberty to talk about apostolic patterns, then we start the book of Acts will be our textbook. Then you will see many extra scriptural things that have been imported into the church that is the reason for our weakness. Because when God builds in the earth, it must be according to the pattern that was seen on the mount. Because the original hard copy of the patterns we want to implement upon the face of the earth, they are in heaven. Because his kingdom is established in the heavenlies. And in the heavenlies, his authority can be exercised to the fullest extent. And part and parcel of the prayer lecture that Jesus gave to his disciples was to pray that thy kingdom come, that I will be done where? On earth, how? As it is done. So we are going to see a lot of things that have been imported into the church that have no representation in the heavens. So that, that happens when apostolic functionaries are not present in the body of Christ importations, false gods and the body of Christ will become weakened and darkness will fall on Goshen Goshen is supposed to be a city that is built with an intimacy with God so that there is always light in Goshen but when Goshen falls to darkness the nations will bleed spirits from the underworld will manipulate the souls of many people turbulence will become the order of the day because if God wants to heal the nations, he uses the church. But if we are out of sync with patterns, we lack authority from the realm of God. I don't have time to do the lecture today. But we will do some apostolic recalibration. Then you will be amazed what is in the book of Acts. God is releasing the apostles massively again so that his church can be restored back to the way he wants it. Not the way that intelligent men want it. Because it must be according to what the pattern that is seen on the map. So when they entered into implementation in the book of Acts, oh you are not with me. Are you there? Stay with me. After the lecture, they entered into implementation. Let me show you the first thing that they did. Then I'll show you the second thing that they did. Then I'll stop. Then when we come for apostolic patterns, I will show you the seven things that they did. So I'll show you two today and five when we come. Then God will give us new eyes and he will give us new lenses so that we will be able to see. So let me show you Acts chapter 1 first and show you Acts chapter 1 verse 16 is the first thing that they needed to do which was prescribed by Jesus. First thing. He said, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowers gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as the field is called in the proper tongue, a keldema, that is to say, the field of blood. Then they go to scriptures as their authority. Even though, are you there? 
then they pick a witness from scriptures. And say, for as it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Now, this is the policy direction. Stay with me. I was in the educational sector at some point in Nigeria. In Nigeria, there is something we call the attendance register. Do you have it here? In the attendance register, you need to make two strokes per day. That means the guy was present in the morning. He was also present before, shortly before closing time. Are you, are you following? And if the guy is present in the morning, you mark like this. If he's absent in the afternoon, you put a zero there. You know what a zero means? He was supposed to be here. You're not with me. Every student has his own line on the register. That line is specific to the student. He cannot transfer that line to his cousin or his brother. It is specific to him. So, the line tells the story of his attendance to academic work. Are you there? So, if he's absent, it will be zero, zero. That means he was supposed to be here. Okay. Can you see what the scripture says? For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate. The habitation that he's talking about is his place in heaven. When we go to heaven, you will see the register. You will see a place carved for a man, but he's absent, zero, zero. Because his habitation cannot be transferred to another person. It belongs only to him. And if he doesn't make it, it will be clear. It will remain like that as a sign that he is not here. His habitation is not transferable. It will remain how? Desolate. You are, not, you are, are you with me? Okay. Mm. Mm. Then, he said, let his habitation be desolate. Let no man dwell therein. But his bishopric, which is the one here in the natural, let another man take. <laughs> so another man can take his bishopric, but no man can take his habitation. <laughs> After all is said and done, if we operate with accurate apostolic patterns, we'll be present in our habitation. It's a guarantee. And the layout is in the Bible. But when Babylon comes in, Babylon is governed by the spirit of the angel of commerce. And it trades in souls. His goal is that there will be a desolate habitation. Let his habitation be desolate. Let no man dwell therein. But his bishop, Rick, his calling, his assignment, let another take. Meditate on these words deeply. His calling can be reassigned. His bishopric can be reassigned. It's just like someone is in marriage and maybe the husband or the wife dies and there's so much tears. Someone else can fill that office. Hmm? The pastor dies. Someone else can what? Fill that office. But if he's not present in his habitation, it will remain desolate. And what is the authority behind what they wanted to do as it is written in the book of Psalms? Are you there? This was what led to the replacement of who? Judas Iscariot. It means Judas Iscariot did not make it to heaven. His habitation. When we get there, you will see this place was meant for Judas. You will see it. And you know that somebody is absent here. So they had to fill up his bishopric. Your habitation will not be desolate. And they brought in Matthias. Because Jesus set up a system that was operating to the base number 12. Huh? So you will notice that there are some individuals called 144,000. Divided by 12 is what? Huh? Because it's base number 12. 
So we need to add somebody else so that it can be 12. Because what we are talking about here is a system that is built according to structural alignment. If you see the people that gave their life to Christ, any time they preached, it was a certain number. The first time it was, how many souls? 3,000 souls. That's structural alignment. They were not, they were not, they were multiplying. They were not, the progression was geometric, not arithmetic. I, I don't have time. I don't have time for that. Uh, are you with me? <laughs> not for today, not for today. But stay with me. The, the progression was what? Was geometric. Because of structural alignment. That's the first thing that they did. Second thing that they did is what I want to read, which is Acts chapter 2. From verse number 42. This was their operating system. This was the scope of their operations. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So they had a four-point agenda. That's what they did. Apostles' doctrine, I don't have time to explain that. But I have time to show you that doctrine there is singular. It's apostles that is plural. Oh, you're yeah, not with me. Are you with me? I have enough time to show you that. I have enough time to show you that in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible speaks about the principles, and principles is plural, but doctrine is singular. Don't worry. When we come for apostolic recalibration, it's for pastors, people that are into ministry, who we'll start with doctrine. Then I will prove, we will prove to you how many of you are part of the problem or part of the solution. True doctrine. Just doctrine. I will show you the 10 levels of the gospel, and then we'll find out what you preach. Then you see the people that are part of the problem. Yes, we need telescopic eyes so that do you understand? We can see from the strategic level. They continued steadfastly. Notice that these were routines and rituals that never ended. So there was a prayer culture. If you came into their midst, you'll be afflicted with so much prayer that uh, uh, somewhere along the line, you too will pick up the life of prayer. Yes, that's how it was. It don't, that's why the Bible says people, there were people that loved what they were doing, but they, they, they never joined them. The reason was because, hey, <laughs> Woo! the moment you enter, there's a mechanical energy that they generate through prayer. Mechanical. It is this mechanical energy that, that gives life to everything, to their worship, to their evangelism, to their business, to their mechanical energy. They were generating it. It was prayer. You know, we stopped at prayer yesterday. That's why I have to come here to continue. So prayer was their mechanical energy. The prayer wheel kept moving. And as long as it was moving, it could give life to Bible study. It could give life to worship. It could give life. Oh my God. Oh, hey, hey. The merchandise that they had was life. But today we have built city churches that is based on customer care and participation. <laughs> the, the pastor is so concerned about the alignment of his tie and it must be silk comes with half an entourage because the pinnacle of the civilization is six is man and that's Babel that's Babylon but what Moses went to do on the mount was to peep into something in the heavens and then to build context and perspective and establish it here so that the dimensions of heaven can begin to operate among the people so they are mechanical energy that drove everything they did because they continued how, how did they continue they continued steadfastly one stroke will not bring that giant down. You need to learn how to prepare for a marathon and not a sprint. Because victory is all about outlasting the devil. So when you, when you learn how to pray, learn how to pray large. Because your life will depend on it. You remember yesterday, he spoke a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to pray. So I'd like you to see if prayer becomes a culture in your life as an individual, in our corporate life as a fellowship, then we are eligible for what I call feedback. Let me show you feedback. Let me show you feedback from verse 43. This, this, this is a documentary of feedback. And fear came upon every soul. And that's one, fear. The fear of God was in the company. Are you there? Today there's no fear of God. A pastor can steal, can be a thief, and he's boasting. A pastor is caught in immorality. 
you know, it's, it's trivial. It's trivial. You know, these things, you know. We are first men before we are men of God. <laughs> it's boasting. Can you see that there is a dimension in the heavens that have been trapped here? The fear of God has been trapped among them. The fear of God is not a citizen of the earth, it's a citizen of heaven. But it's trapped among their company. And fear came upon every soul. The revelation of God's awesome holiness hit the camp. This is a version of sociology you cannot find in the textbooks. This is the culture of heaven. Fear. You used to fear God when you were alone. You fear Him. I don't want to break His heart. Huh? There were times I came to the pulpit, I preached powerfully. Then I missed it. Then he expresses his displeasure. Meanwhile, people are healing me and miracles are taking place. I leave that place to go and beg him for, for days. You know why? He's all I have. But a lot of people can get by and continue doing their mechanical stuff without him. So they can seem they don't care. Just there. Say, you know, this, there's a grace. There's a grace. There's a grace. That's Babylon. It is a science that was pioneered by one of the fallings. the tower of Babel. It has, it has lived on in the hearts of men that are not loyal to Jesus Christ. So fear came upon every soul. Then the, the, the se second feedback was that signs and wonders became commonplace. The signs of God. The wonders of God because the dimensions of God were trapped. No man can predict what will happen when they come together. You know, the way we were floating in, in, in worship, no man can predict what, what that river will produce. signs and wonders were done by the hands of the apostles and they that believed were together that's unity and they had all things in common a lot of us think unity is union those of us that were on campus that were in um, the student union you were an activist it's not that's not unity I know you guys were able to get some things done. You, you apply pressure and the, the school authorities say, okay, oh, 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 all right, let's, 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 let's sit down. Let's discuss it. That's union. Unity is first in the spirit. My spirit will align with yours. There will be witness in my spirit that, yes, we are king's men. For the Bible says, and forth, no, we know man after the flesh. Are you there? So when I met my friend, Dr. Rodney, I, I, I knew he was my king's man. That he knows my God. The moment we are separated onto the same thing, onto the same person, we will not find any difficulty in connecting with the natural. For the spirit within us will be a witness. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to. No, I don't struggle. I don't struggle. Every time I violated the witness of the Holy Spirit and connected with somebody, it produced Satan dealt a very terrible blow on my life. I've since become wise. Henceforth, no we, no man after. They all had all things, they were together and had all things in common. Still feedback. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Hallelujah. This was an economic principle. An economic principle was alive amongst them. This principle cannot be seen in capitalism, cannot be seen in socialism. This is different. And this was how they conquered poverty in their midst. So somebody can be putting on a Rolex watch and then on Wednesday you see the same Rolex watch in somebody else's hand because the Holy Spirit has prompted him to, to release. So the Holy, distribution takes place. And then you find people in some conditions. God will speak to somebody and say, go and send a hundred thousand rand to them. No human being told him. He came and distributed. And what they needed to climb to the next level was that hundred thousand rand. It was an economic principle that was not in the textbooks. Oh my God. I want your eyes to be open to see the culture of heaven trapped among men. If we replicate these dimensions, nobody will want to miss church. Church will be like an ivory tower of light. Today we see flesh on the pulpit. Flesh. 
And the moment flesh begins to cover the space, the Holy Spirit quietly withdraws. And he allows men to, to be doing their marketing. Hallelujah. They sold their goods and possessions and parted them. To all men, as every man had need, so they killed poverty. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house. They eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. God was the pinnacle of, of, of their civilization and having favor with all the people. When they went out to their offices, the unbelievers favored them. Not because they were good people, but because they were carrying something that was glorious. It's just like uh, the, the, the Egyptians, uh, the Jews went to the Egyptians and asked them for what they needed for their trip. And even though the Egyptians were wicked people, there was something on the Jews that made them not to be able to resist them. Do you understand? And the Bible says that they spoiled the Egyptians. When you go to walk to the bank with that glory upon your life, you cannot be resisted. You'll be given opportunities that you're not qualified for. The reason why our nations are sick is because the church is sick. If we can restore this pattern, where we trap the dimensions of God, a new civilization breaks out amongst us, you will see that lands will fall. Because the Bible says, praising God, and they had favor with all the people. And even though, with or without evangelism, the Lord added unto their numbers, such as should be saved. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now.